Okay, up until now, we learned about a number of exciting different ways to evaluate performance of uh, binary classification predictive model. And uh, as you may have noticed, in every measure introduced so far, precision, recall, area under our C curve, gains, lift, etc., etc., we would take the predicted response surface H of X, and we would only use it and either sort our records in order to construct ROC and gains, or just pick a threshold and then come up with all of those measures, sensitivity, recall, precision, etc., etc. So the H of X, in other words, was only interpreted as some kind of formal abstract score. I mean, think about it as I say, in credit worthiness, I would score everyone according to a FICA score. Now, the FICA score by itself has no meaning other than if I have uh, two people and one person has a greater FICO score, that kind of communicates the message that he has a, a better credit history. But other than that, there is no direct implement interpretation uh, of that entity. Now, in the next, uh, uh, in the kind of, in the follow-up development now, we're going to focus on direct interpretation of H of X as a, some kind of a probability or a probability related score. So let me start by introducing a few mathematical concepts here. So first of all, let's define the probability of a positive outcome, Y equals positive, as P. So this P here is probability that Y uh, has a positive outcome. Um, and again, the positive outcome is something that we need to decide and uh, stick to it for the, for the rest of the modeling process. So you always pick the event in focus, whether it's a fraud case or death or responder in the case of direct marketing campaign. And from now on, P will stand for predicted probability that Y has a positive outcome. Now, probability has uh, an interesting characteristic because it's defined in a way that it always has to be between 0 and 1. Now, in some cases, uh, people want to convert the probability to a different concept that is no longer having that constraint of being forced to be defined between 0 and 1. And this is where we can introduce an alternative entity known as uh, log odds. Now, formally, log odds, in this case, I'll use H for reasons that will become uh, clear pretty soon. The log odds is the logarithm, natural log, of the ratio of probability of positive event divided by 1 minus probability of positive event, which is the probability of negative event. Now, this entity inside is known as odds. And you're all probably familiar with expressions like 50-50 odds that usually denotes probability of 0.5. Or you could get a 9 to 1 odds that usually means that a P is 0.9 and 1 minus P is 0.1, and so on and so forth. And the log odds, you see odds, they are always positive, but the log odds could be either positive or negative. And that's what makes that entity kind of nice to model because you no longer have those uh, zero one constraints or zero constraint that arise in either modeling probability directly or odds directly. Now, if you look at the log odds uh, formula, it essentially defines one to one correspondence between probability and log odds h. Uh, that function can be inverted, and therefore you can express probability in terms of log odds. And uh, actually, I've noticed uh, a little mistake here. So this negative, uh, the 2 should be eliminated. And you simply have probability is defined as 1 divided by 1 plus e to negative h. The reason I had 2 there is that sometimes people talk about half log odds, 
like in particular if you read uh, some of the Jerry Friedman's papers and most notably if you work with TreeNet which is one of the most important engines that we have available now TreeNet always works with half log odds and therefore when you define this h as one half of the log of p over one minus p then when you invert the function then you'll get the original probability can be modeled as one over one plus e to negative two h but in the classical theory that's kind of not really a requirement and it's just a scaling constant that can either be used here or there and it's pretty much irrelevant for our discussion here now what is it more important for you to understand is to understand that uh, if you plot this function on the graph so this is the graph of uh, probability versus log odds and then when you have log odds of zero you have a probability of 0.5 so it's this point here as log odds go towards plus infinity your probability approaches 1.0 as log odds go towards negative infinity your probability approaches zero so in this case basically the beauty of this so-called logistic function or simply a sigmoid sigmoid function the beauty of the sigmoid function is that it maps the entire positive negative infinity uh, range of values to essentially this interval between 0 and 1 that can be interpreted as a probability space and therefore whenever you need to model something that uh, concerned with predicting probability of certain outcome you might as well reformulate it in terms of working with log odds or half log odds in the case of TreeNet and uh, so then simply once you build a model for log odds then you can immediately convert it into model in terms of probability and vice versa so what you need to understand at this point is that when you have a, a log odds it's just a different way to assign a probability of positive outcome if I give you log odds you can quickly convert it into probability if I give you probability it can be quickly converted into log odds and this s-shaped curve is, is establishes this the nature of this transformation so what we're going to do next is we're going to directly interpret h of x as log odds so in this case whenever we build a binary classification model at this point we're going to focus on the interpretational side of that model as that that hypothesis function or response surface h of x will now be interpreted as a log odds of getting a positive response and if you do that assumption uh, then you can construct a whole new specific cost function uh, by applying a maximum likelihood principle uh, you see in this case the conditional distribution of y uh, given x so let's put it here the conditional distribution of y uh, given x is a Bernoulli and the Bernoulli could be modeled as the probability uh, to power y times 1 minus probability to power 1 minus y and y is assumed to be belonging to a 0 1 so if you observed positive you're getting 1 if you observe negative uh, you're getting uh, 0 so that's the PDF of the Bernoulli and now if you take the PDF and apply maximum likelihood principle then eventually it will lead you to this natural logistic cost function uh, expressed over here and again just a few things to emphasize y is assumed to be coded as 0 and 1 and because of that the cost function and again the cost function is the function that accepts observed values of response and predicted response surface so the cost function can be expressed 
as is, as is this uh, relationship here, and always uh, keep an eye on this minus negative in front of it. So this is a negative log likelihood under IID Bernoulli assumptions. And this cost is becoming the main cost that will be minimized in order to construct a true uh, kind of uh, binary logistic model where the, where the response surface is directly interpreted as h of x. Now, it's instructive to look at this cost function to see how it happens. And let me correct this uh, a little bit here because I, I want to straighten up some of the uh, graphs here. Okay, good. All right, so suppose, again, going back to our data set that we had before, if this is my y and this is my x, univariate x, suppose I have uh, the density of ones rising as we approaching a higher axis. So I have more ones on the right and I have more zeros on the left. Okay, and in this case, if we fit uh, some kind of h of x, suppose it goes like this, so this is my h of x. Now, h of x is interpreted as uh, log odds, which means this response surface can be directly converted into probability. I mean, basically, when h of x is 0, my predicted probability is going to be 0.5. As h of x goes above zero, my predicted probability is going is going to go towards uh, 1.0. As x goes down, my predicted probability goes towards zero. So, in other words, whenever I get an h of x in terms of uh, log odds, I have a one-to-one -one correspondence to p of x in terms of probability. And when I have this probability function defined as a function of x, I can quickly plug it into this equation and get the corresponding measure of cost. Now, of course, you can also uh, check the calculations yourself. Suppose you observed a positive outcome. Well, if you observed positive outcome, you get this term because yi is now positive. And uh, basically, the contribution to your cost is going to be simply the logarithm of the probability of positive outcome. Now, is that probability is between 0 and 1, so the log is always going to be negative. That's why we have this negative sign over here to cancel it out, so that the cost is always positive. But as the probability of positive approaches 1.0, the log will approach uh, 0, and the contribution to our cost function will be smaller and smaller. In a similar way, this term here is triggered when y is set to 0, and that is an example of having a negative. So whenever you have a negative observation, what you're going to contribute is the log of 1 minus probability of positive. So as the probability of positive approach is 0, which means you're more and more confident that you're going to get a negative, the contribution of this term into the cost function will be smaller and smaller. So even though this cost looks very different than what we've seen before, like least squares or LAD or Huber M, it's again yet another way to incorporate the elements of what we observed and what we predict. Now it's very critical that what we observed is now coded as 0 and 1, and what we predict is interpreted as log odds. Uh, and what we predict, well, in this case, it's not log odds yet, it's a probability, but uh, uh, it's just the expression that assumes that the probability has been linked to log odds. A and this is the part that kind of uh, nice, because the entire cost function has been naturally introduced by the application of the likelihood principle. And by the way, if you want to express cost function in terms of h of x itself, all you would need to do is uh, substitute the expression for probability as the function of h, which is given here. The probability as the function of uh, log odds. So if you do that substitution, what you will discover that it's also useful to remap 
the coding for variable y as uh, instead of 0, 1, we want to make it a plus 1 or minus 1. Plus 1 stands for positive, minus 1 stands for negative. So if you do all of the substitutions and do all of that remapping, what you will discover is that the same cost function, logistic cost function, can also be re-expressed as this equation over here. And again, at this time there is no minus in front. And you have a sum over observations of the log of 1 plus e to negative y sub i when i sub i is coded minus 1 and plus 1, h of x sub i. And again, it's instructive if you say, if you have a positive uh, observed response, we know that the contribution into the loss is the logarithm of the probability of positive. Now, if you look at this formula, what you will see is you'll get 1 plus e to negative h of x. Now, h is hooked to the probability according to this log p over 1 minus p. So if you plug that in, do the simplification, you will arrive when yi is 1, you will get the same identical result as here in terms of probability. And likewise, if yi is minus 1, and if you do the substitution and the simplification, you'll see that the end result is identical to this term here. So regarding the expression, you either express cost function in terms of uh, probabilities, predicted probabilities, or you express it in terms of predicted log odds. You could even use half log odds. You would have to insert a little two over there. But by and large, the Binary classification problem will be solved in the exact terms if you can find or construct the response surface H of X or a one-to-one -one transformation P of X that minimizes the corresponding loss function that is constructed according to maximum likelihood principle for the uh, binary logistic binary classification in this case. And that's the most important insight that you can gain uh, from here. So at this point, we moved from interpretation of response surfaces as some kind of scores to the exact interpretation in terms of probability. And now we know that you can interpret it either on a true probability scale or a one-to-one -one related scale in terms of half log, uh, in terms of log odds. And the log odds are useful because they are unconstrained. So you could say that your log odds is a simply a linear combination of axes, so say theta transpose time x. And if you do that, what it means is that you will arrive at a, a logistic regression or a classical re logistic regression. So the point is, regardless of what you're doing, if you focus on building a response surface for log odds, you don't have to deal with any of the constraints. And uh, once you obtain that response surface by minimizing the logistic cost function expressed on this slide, then you can always uh, remap it in terms of the original probability scale. Now, why is that important? Uh, it's because there's a lot of techniques out there that work under this assumption. I already mentioned logistic regression, but uh, most notably, tree net or stochastic gradient boosting has uh, uh, native support for binary classification. And when TreeNet builds binary logistic models, internally it constructs this function h of x as a, as a, as a function of x. And once you have the h of x, you can always convert it into probability. But because it's unconstrained, it's a lot easier uh, to deal with. I'm pretty much clear on all of the different uh, performance evaluation criteria that uh, arise in the binary classification case. That allows us to move on to the next part where we will cover uh, the case of uh, multinomial classification when the target class, uh, uh, target variable has not just two classes but maybe three, four, five or more.